I would have definitely tried to make myself more presentable if I were to plan on making a video. But I decided I'm just going to do it. Fuck it. Why not? It's not going to be a very long video. Basically, I want to say that I want you guys to check every Friday at 9 a.m. to see if I've made a post on Blogger. I know I made one for this Friday, so you guys can go ahead and check out that shit. And really, it's really good if you check that out, especially if you like my work, because I'll be doing them um, every Friday that I want to, so you can check at 9 a.m. every Friday. If I didn't post anything, I probably won't, and you have to check next week. It's not very difficult. It's not like other blogs where you have to keep on checking because you never know when I'm going to do a post. No, no, no. You know if I'm going to do a post or not because it's all going to be scheduled at the same uniform time and if it, I didn't make a post, then you'll have to wait next week. Also, I'll do one every respective Saturday for the wrestling-related stuff. Since I know that that subject has always been really fun for me. I really like ranting about this stuff. I'm always on the side of negative indifference. That's the one problem. I, I think I make the blogs at the wrong time. I never do it right place, right time. I know I did for Raw 1000, and I thought that was pretty good, but other than that, it's hit or miss for me because I don't know when to do them. I don't know when things are going to start getting interesting or when they're not going to get interesting. It's very hard to predict. It's usually a stream of boredom, and then, bam, something interesting happens. Why wasn't I there to record it then? Which shouldn't be the case. It should be the case that... I know when things get interesting. I know when things start heating up. But such is life. Such is life. I wanted to explain some of the blog posts, specifically the one you'll see Friday. I serve as a change in writing style. How I speak positively towards divine. I know for those that know I'm an atheist, that's probably going to be a little confusing. The way I see it, I wrote down, especially for my last series blog post, that you can define a godly or a divine figure as something that goes past the aids, the basic desires we have, which is where our civilization truly thrives. A civilization that moves past material desires and basic wants, whether it's in a box or in a vagina and then from there just, just a society that revolves on a moral standpoint and then also you can define a godly figure as being that which is a cosmic figure that which enters into regions of the unknown what are regions of the unknown well one region of the unknown I can think of is fates those that curse fate, curse God. Whenever something bad happens that you didn't expect or you didn't really want but you didn't choose for it, we kind of blame the unknown. We kind of blame the forces. Even atheists kind of blame God sometimes. And I always thought that embracing the unknown and all its negativities that may come from it is essentially embracing God. So I'd like to take it as an opportunity to embrace the negative externalities of chance. Which, in and of itself, is embracing God, which is necessary for civilization. And if you're thinking about it like that, you're thinking about the future, you're having hope. And without hope, you could die of misery. Or things that come from that misery, that unnecessary misery, that excessive misery, that you could avoid by simply having hope, by embracing whatever may come, and 
that's basically it. And for this blog post, which is related to more of my critiques of leftism in general, I'll be discussing the vulgar side of leftism, and I'll be talking about the social justice side of leftism. Where the vulgar side, I consider, let's say, vulgar feminism. Where it's feminism to its logical and vulgar conclusions. When we say something is vulgar, we say... That you're basically revealing too much about it. For example, if I'm trying to give this analogy in a clean way and then the vulgar way, if you're trying to be polite and talking about your relationship with, let's say, someone else, oh, um, me and that person occasionally make love or if you want to be scientific we the two of us are sexually active with each other if you're talking to a doctor or speaking to a doctor about your health concerns but if you're gonna be vulgar but you're gonna say alright I fucked that chick right there I, I fucked her uh, that's what you'd say if you were gonna say in a vulgar way but vulgar feminism is basically that it's taking something to its logical conclusion which may be too much for people for example we think of vulgar libertarianism where vulgar libertarianism and I'm using an example for an example again vulgar libertarians are so for the free market that they'll uh, ignore all the bad sides I mean we know of free marketers that uh, identify some of the problems with a free market and provide solutions or they provide counter solutions within the free market to those free market problems that'd be the most logical way of dealing with the situation but we all see those vulgar libertarians for example one guy commented on a video I made to Spock talk where I said that for a nutrition thing, states forcing people to eat right. How do we know? Because we've been telling people to engage in a Pritikin diet and all sorts of fad diets that don't really do good. And think about the school lunches we give to our kids. I have school lunch. That shit sucks. Sometimes I don't buy it. Most of the time I don't buy that shit because I don't want that in my system. And it's not worth the money, that 150 it's not 150 meal, it's, they should be paying me to eat that shit. And then you go from that to the vulgar feminists that see all the negative externalities of feminism and think, you know what, it's worth it. It's worth this movement, it's worth this idea going into society, it's worth the progress, it's worth this and that. And they think, alright, that's, it's all worth it. breakdown of the family, the fact that I'm miserable, the fact that I'm fat and lonely, and I'm aging, and I'm not going to be able to have a very healthy social life aside from friends who don't really care about me. And there are a lot of friends like that, especially from groups that social circles that are very shallow and we get a lot of that now but moreover they'll say it's worth it and then we go from the vulgar people to social justice leftists who and they're compatible with the vulgar ones sometimes but other times they're not they like to do reverse shaming like for example some feminists are like it's my body if I want to eat a lot of junk food, get diabetes, probably die from the complications, then you're guilty me, you're using privilege on me. My body, if I want abortion, I should get it. You're being a patriarchal scumbag if you're judging me on that. And then they'll start judging you, it's called reverse shaming. I mean, some shaming is good because it's 
for the concern of everyone else and your well-being and utter shaming, the like counter reverse shaming, it's not coming from that position of love. It's coming from a position of self hatred. Like, oh, you really care about me? Fuck you for caring about me or thinking about me. I'm just going to do me and. If you don't like that, then you're scum. You're what this world shouldn't have. You're a judgmental, hypocritical prick. And see how it goes? That's a little problematic. Now, again, in that blog post, I wasn't saying that all libertarians are bad. You know, I'm no longer a libertarian or an ANCAP or any of these other things. However, I'm not saying that all leftists do this thing, one or the other or both. There are some mainstream leftists that avoid the shaming or they don't think about their ideas and the, their most logical vulgar conclusion. They think about things in a utopic way or not fully, just hoping that if this leftist dream works that it'll mean that they get something to eat you know, for the middle class, working class, or poor leftists. It it means that it's the fulfillment of your lifestyle. So I could understand that. At the same time, I don't really like it or agree with it, and I know that that's also part of the problem too. That that leftism has dominated a working class and a poor class, which, while these are the masses, that's a large population, which also has a lot of problems in and of itself. And the lead is also very... We're dealing with our very worst of elitists and the elite. All it boils down to is you got to read these blogs if you're interested in what I'm saying. They're very short. I tend to be very minimalistic with my writing. I don't do those 20 paragraph mold buggy in blogs with new terminology thrown everywhere or foreign terminology I'm not going to throw in some of that Hindu caste system shit to make my writing seem more interesting or to describe the little tribes which are obvious in the United States that's not an interest of mine I'm really just interested in seeing how you guys feel because these blogs these aren't to get popular or to get view counts. I only care about view counts. I'm using these blogs to make everything more simple for you guys to understand, but also to preserve some of my thoughts without worrying about YouTube flagging my videos if what I say no longer becomes politically acceptable, and it's not politically acceptable at the moment. It hasn't been for a long time, and I'm starting to accept that I'm starting to learn from that. I'm starting to adapt to that. And if you guys have anything to say, leave a comment. I really hate saying shit like that, like, subscribe to my channel, like this video, leave a comment. But no, leave, leave a comment if you want. I'm not a bitch, and I know that stuff like that does work. Believe it or not, if you say to like a video, people will actually like the fucking video, especially if it's short, and you say it straight at the beginning or straight at the end or both. People are much more docile than they like to believe. But such is life. Such is life. How many times am I going to say that, niggas? This is Mr. Wonka 7, and suck my dick.